It's Patrick Hutzel from intensivecarehotline.com with another quick tip for families in intensive care. Today's tip is an email from Andrew who says, Hi Patrick, my dad's been in ICU and now in LTAC for two months. They keep saying end of life care. They are not listening, not giving status of reports, not doing physical therapy, etc. This is horrible. What would you advise? From Andrew. Well, thank you, Andrew, for writing in, and I'm so sorry to hear about what your dad is currently dealing with. And obviously, this is for anyone watching this, this is specifically for our audience in the US because LTAX uniquely exists only in the US. LTAX stands for long term acute care. In a nutshell, in the US, many intensive care patients that end up often prematurely with a tracheostomy and a PEC tube get shipped to LTAC not for clinical care, it is simply designed to save money. The clinical care in most LTACs is abhorrent and I have made countless of videos about this on my channel. Anyway, so let's break this down. You know, if you had come to me, Andrew, a few weeks ago, a couple of months ago, I would have said, no way should your dad go to LTAC and let's put proven strategies in place to keep him in ICU because that's what we do. We advocate for families in intensive care successfully. That goes without saying because we have proven strategies to get outcomes for patients and families in intensive care. So, you know, if you had come to us and worked with us and said, hey, I don't want my dad to go to LTAC, we would have made that happen for you with our proven consulting advocacy strategies. We've been doing it for many years. You know, we can't turn back the tide. Now he is in LTAC and they keep saying end of life care. Well, why do they say end of life care, right? That's number one. Now you're also saying they're not listening. Well, I'm not surprised that they are not listening. Just by the way, we've just helped another client to go from LTAC back to ICU once again, because we successfully advocated and we successfully put strategies in place how to get a patient back from LTAC to ICU. So if you need help there, Andrew, you know where we are. Anyway, if they're not giving you the status of reports, you know, I presume you are the power of attorney for your dad, but they have to give you access to the reports, right? It's not a privilege. It is a right for you to have access to the medical records. My advice here is, and also given that they're not doing physical therapy and talk about end of life care, my advice here would be that you make a formal complaint to the top, i.e. hospital executive. Once again, we've done that many times for our clients successfully with very good outcomes because we know how to advocate. We know what the arguments are. Also, we've never had a client who can't get access to the medical records, never, ever, as long as they can follow advice and as long as they can follow the strategies that we have in our arsenal. So only then will things change for you. Now also, end of life care, as you know, if you are a regular viewer of my channel, you will know by now, end of life care is not a decision that a hospital can make unilaterally. It's not a decision that they can make without patient or family consent, right? It's very simple. So don't even go down that track. Don't even entertain the argument or entertain a discussion around that. You don't have to, right? So this is my advice. Make a formal complaint and we can help you with that by, you know, writing the emails to the hospital executive. We've got email templates that we use. You know, a hospital executive cannot ignore the complaint of a patient or a family, right? And if you're watching this, do not go to LTAC. It's as simple as that. Do not go to LTAC under any circumstances and reach out to us if you need help, how to make it happen so that your dad or mom or whoever it is doesn't go to LTAC. We've just successfully worked with a client that we helped to stay in ICU and they've come off the ventilator there. There's really no need to go to LTAC. LTACs are not even the better version of a nursing home. It's not even that. Okay, so because we get so many questions from families in intensive care, 
That's why we have created a membership for families of critically ill patients in intensive care at intensivecarehotline.com. Uh, go there and click on the membership link and you can become a member there. Uh, and if, uh, or you go to intensivecaresupport.org directly in the membership, you have access to me and my team 24 hours a day in the membership area and via email. And we answer all questions intensive care related. In the membership, you also have access to 21 ebooks and 21 videos. They are exclusive for members only. And they will help you um, steer this difficult territory that is intensive care. And it will help you to make informed decisions, have peace of mind, control, power, and influence. I've written the ebooks and I've recorded the videos for our members. I have worked in critical care for nearly 25 years in three different countries, where I also worked as a nurse manager for over five years. I have been consulting and advocating for families in intensive care very successfully since 2013 and you can be at intensivecarehotline.com and you can look up our testimonials at intensivecarehotline.com if you click on the testimonials section. We have saved lives and we also have client interviews on our podcast section where it's verified by clients that we have saved lives with our consulting and advocacy. Irregardless of what intensive care teams want, we have kept, we have helped keeping patients in ICU you know, and not letting them go to LTAC, just as, uh, as Andrew pointed out in his email today, that it was a mistake going to LTAC. We can do the same for you. I also offer one-on-one -on -one consulting and advocacy over the phone, Skype, WhatsApp, Zoom, whichever medium works best for you. I talk to you and your families directly, but I also talk to doctors and nurses directly, and you see that in just a conversation with them you will see that the dynamics will change in your favor because then intensive care teams know you have um someone on your team that understands intensive care inside out just as much as they do and that they can't hide and that they will be held to account i also represent you in family meetings with intensive care teams i strategize with you what strategies to use that once again you make informed decisions, have peace of mind, control, power, and influence, so that your loved one gets best care and treatment. We also offer medical record reviews in real time so that you can have a second opinion in real time. We also offer medical record reviews after intensive care if you have unanswered questions, if you need closure, or if you are suspecting medical negligence. And all of that you get at intensivecarehotline.com. Call us on one of the numbers on the top of our website or send us an email to support at intensivecarehotline.com. If you like my videos, subscribe to my YouTube channel for regular updates for families in intensive care. Click the like button, click the notification bell, share the video with your friends and families and comment below what you want to see next, what questions and insights you have from this video. Thanks for watching. This is Patrick Hutzel from intensivecarehotline.com and I will talk to you in a few days. Take care for now.